you can click on that waffle icon and click on YouTube. If you don't see it right away, you might need to scroll down. There might even be the option to click on more, but you should see YouTube show up in that list. Once inside YouTube, I'm going to go over here and click on my face. So this is where I would see my account. And I'm going to go down here and click on YouTube Studio. Here, it's going to prompt you to create your channel. And you'll see that it, by default, just puts in your first name, last name. So you'll click this Create Channel button. And now it'll give you the option to explore with a little tour of the studio, or you can click Got It. We recommend watching the video tour because it'll take you through some of those different pieces of YouTube. Um, but you can also skip it and just follow along or learn at your own pace. To upload a video to YouTube, you'll need to have the video downloaded onto your computer's hard drive. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Google Drive. Now let's say I've been making videos in Screencastify. I'm going to open up my Screencastify folder, which is in my Google Drive. I'm going to identify the file that I'd like to download. If I right click on it, or two finger click if you're on a laptop, you're going to scroll all the way down here to download, and you're going to download that file onto your computer. You'll see it'll pop up here at the bottom and it'll end up in your downloads folder unless you've selected a different place for it to go on your computer. I'm gonna go back to my YouTube right now and I have the option here to either click this upload video button or I can click up here on create and click upload video. You'll get this window here. I'm going to click select file. And now I'm going to go to my downloads and I'm going to look for that video that I found, so or that I created, creating a YouTube account, and I'm going to open that video. It's going to now upload that video, and you'll see now that it's uploaded it, it's still working on processing the video. So while it's doing that, I can put, I have a few options. I can put in a description here about my video. So if this is a lesson for your students, maybe you're going to say, you know, describe what you're going to teach them in this lesson briefly, something like that. You have the option here to add a thumbnail. So you can upload a thumbnail so that a thumbnail would be an image. So if you wanted to create an image or something like that, that would be the start of your video or what they would see, you can do that. Otherwise, it'll give you some um, auto-generated thumbnails from the video itself. So you can wait for those to load and add those. You can select a playlist that you want it on. So if you want to create a playlist for a class, so let's say you've got grade eight math in the morning, for example, you might make a playlist specifically for that class, right? So it might be nice to add this to that class. I can then choose whether I want it to be a public playlist, a private playlist, or an unlisted one. If you're sharing this with your students, you would want it to be either public or unlisted. So public means that everybody on the internet might be able to find this playlist. This is the same for video. So if anything is public, anybody on the internet could find that video. If it's private, only you will be able to view it. So if you make it private, your students will not be able to see it. So that's not a good option. But unlisted is a really nice option for schools. Because what that means is that you, anyone who has the link can view that video. So in this case, because we're making a playlist, if you make it unlisted and you share the link to that playlist with your class, everybody in your class would be able to see that playlist, but it wouldn't be searchable on the internet. So I'm gonna choose unlisted because I like that idea of having a little bit of privacy. I'm going to click create. And I'm going to select that playlist for this video. And then I'll hit done. Now, scrolling along further, it asks me about my audience. So is this video made for kids? So if you are making videos for your classes, you're definitely going to check the yes, it's made for kids button. If you are making an instructional video for your staff, so if this is, you know, if you're a principal and you're making a video for your staff, you might choose the no, it's not made for kids button. But again, if you are making it for kids, I would choose yes, it's made for kids. You've got more options down here as well. So paid promotion, you can do that. But again, because this is education, you shouldn't need to do that. You can also add tags. So if you want to put in things like OCSB, um, you can do that kind of thing as well. Or if your school has a tag, you could do that. 
but you don't have to do this either. This is something that's totally an option. Um, the tags just help people find your video. So if this is something that you want others to find, this is what might be, this might be useful. Down here, language subtitles and closed captions. I would um, definitely consider choosing your language through here. So I'm gonna scroll down and click on English Canada. These are especially important if you have students um, who are English language learners, or um, if you have students who are deaf or hard of hearing. Uh, closed captions are excellent, excellent, excellent tools for improving the accessibility of our videos. So um, YouTube is great because it automatically creates those for you. And later I'm going to show you how to edit those things. You have the option to put in your recording date and location. And again, this stuff you probably don't need to change. If you wanna change this to education, I think there's an education one in here. So you can change the category. Okay, so once you've kind of gone through and made all those changes, you're going to hit next. And you can come back and change some of those things after as well. Um, you have the option here to add an end screen or add cards and stuff. So if you want to kind of promote things at the end of your video, you can do that, but you don't need to. And then again, your visibility. So earlier we set the visibility for our playlist. Here we're going to set the visibility for our video. So I'm going to make this an unlisted video because I only want students in my class to find it. If I made it, make it public, you'll see that everyone on the internet can see my video. So again, I'm gonna choose unlisted, um, private, it'd be only you and people you can choose. So there is an option to share it if it is private, but again, unlisted is probably your best bet because then you're gonna be able to share it easily with your students and parents if need be. A few kids appear in this video. So we have some really important things to keep in mind when we're making lessons. So if you, for example, have made a video and it includes student names, or um, student pictures and those you don't have permission to share those pictures you might want to think twice before you post it onto YouTube um, yeah so it gives you kind of some information here about that kind of stuff but we do want you always thinking about student safety especially in these new times where we are using a lot more online video um, keep in mind what you are sharing to the internet so once you've done all that you're going to hit save and your video is now published you can now take this link right here and click on this button and it'll copy that link and it's ready to be shared with your students. You can also click here and it'll go, it will give you an embed code. So if you're using a website or something like that, class website, you can take that and paste the embed code into your website, which is a really nice way to share. Um, and you'll see there's some other options here for sharing. But again, the, the most likely option that you're going to use is the copy video link. If you close this, you'll be able to find that link again. Don't worry. So you can see now my video is here. It gives me options to edit the details, to view the analytics. So this is where I would see the number of views. I can check out the comments if there are any, and I can view it on YouTube. So if I click on this button, it's going to open it up and show me what it would look like on YouTube. I could take this link and share it with my students here. Or if I click on the share button, again, it's going to give me access to that link and I can copy paste that into an email or into a workspace or something like that. I click on playlists. You'll see now that I've got this grade eight math playlist created. So if I wanna take that link, I can actually just take that link here. It'll take me right to that playlist. So if I want to share this with my class, I could just copy that email or this web address here at the top and share that via email with my class. So it's a really nice way to um, kind of put all your videos in one place, especially if you're using the playlist. The analytics button here will show you um, if you've gotten any views and kind of how long people are viewing videos for. So you can take a look at some of those features there. This is especially helpful if you're um, wanting to see if your students are actually accessing your videos and seeing how often that they're being viewed. Um, also really helpful to see if they're actually watching the videos in full, right? So if you are creating lessons and you wanna see how long they've watched a video for, um, that can be a really useful place. The, okay, I'm going to show you how you can add or edit your closed captions in a video. If I'm in my YouTube studio, I'm going to click on videos. From here, I'm going to select the video that I'd like to edit the subtitles for and click the little pencil for details. I'm then going to come over to my left side here and click subtitles. You'll see over here 
that the subtitles have been published and they are automatic for the video. If you don't see this message, you might have a little bubble right here in the middle of your screen that asks you to select a language and set that as your default language. So you should go ahead and do that and then refresh your screen. If I click on Published Subtitles, you'll see now that I get this um, window that shows me um, the published subtitles and the automatic subtitles that have been generated. So now I can click through these and if I, I can read them and make sure that all my grammar and spelling is correct. If I need to change anything, so for example, I can see here that it's put in gonna, G-O-N-N-A, so maybe I want to change that to going to. I'm going to hit edit. And then I can just click in here and I can switch that to going to. Once I've done that, I can hit publish edits and my new subtitles will be updated to reflect what I wanted to say. What you'll see here is that right now it's giving me the option to add subtitles. This is because the video is still new and just processing. If I give it some time, eventually the video will have auto-generated um, subtitles. Okay, I do have the option to go in here and add my own subtitles. So if I have a video transcript, I can upload a file. If I click on transcribe and auto-sync, it actually gives me the option to type out the words that I'm saying in the video as I'm watching it. This takes a little bit of time, but it's very accurate because it is, um, it's, it's your own typing and you can change things. So if you kind of fuddle the word as you're speaking through the video, you can type it out the way that you wanted it to be, to be read. And that's a really good way um, to do that. If you create new subtitles or CC, then it gives you this option. Now I will say that creating, um, using the second option is a lot easier than this, but you can also kind of just type in your stuff here and press enter and it'll create subtitles for you. Um, but I'd say if you're gonna use one of these options, number two here, transcribe and auto sync is the easiest because that's going to give you an option to just type out your own script and it auto pauses while you're typing out the script. Um, it, depending on the length of your video, this might take you no time at all. Uh, it might take you some time, but it's, it's a really good option. And especially if you have students um, with various accommodations in your class, especially if you have a student who's deaf or hard of hearing, this is essential for your class.